And now we will be going over to New York, where we have Niklas Hoiverdop. Niklas is CEO and Market Area North Americas of Ericsson, and he will share his perspective on exponential solutions. Meet Niklas Heuveldop. Niklas has worked with Ericsson for more than 25 years, as well as having led a variety of venture capital-backed technology startups. Now he is CEO of Ericsson North America. Climate change is real, and it is having devastating effects today. 2019 was the second hottest year on record, according to NASA and NOAA. As I stand here today, we have dozens of wildfires raging across the West Coast, millions of acres of forest devastated, dozens of lives consumed. Another worrisome indication of climate change is natural disasters. And we have seen an escalating trend in severe weather conditions. In 2019, the damages caused by hurricanes and other severe weather conditions cost the US $45 billion. Unless we take firm, aggressive actions today, we will not be able to reverse this trend. We have an ambition to reduce the CO2 footprint by 50% between today and 2030, and 50% every decade thereafter, to reach a zero net carbon footprint by 2050. My name is Niklas Hoivelop. I head up Ericsson's operations here in North America, and I'm here to give you some examples on how digital connectivity can drive sustainable, positive climate action and enable more sustainable development. So let's look at how our industry sector, the information and communications technology sector, can contribute towards that 50% ambition. As an industry, we only represent about 1.4% of the total carbon emissions, but we have an opportunity to impact at least 15% of that total CO2 footprint. And by adding new technology, new capabilities, 5G, artificial intelligence, machine learning, mobile edge compute type capabilities, I'm confident and I have to believe that the addressable footprint for us is going to be even larger. So we should be able to impact at least 15% of the carbon footprint as an industry. So where does it all begin? We start with ourselves. We start with Ericsson. What can we do? And we have set an ambitious target to be carbon neutral by 2030 in all of our operations across the world. We also have a significant impact on how our customers can contribute to the carbon footprint. And by leveraging increased investments in research and development, we have found ways to improve the efficiency and the energy consumption of our equipment by an order of magnitude in this technology shift going from 4G to 5G. So let's look at some more specifics here. If we start with us, we have just earlier this year launched our new smart factory in Louisville, North Texas. And here we're leveraging some of the latest breakthroughs in technology. So think drones for surveillance, autonomous guided vehicles to uh, move equipment around the factory, AR and VR for remote education, troubleshooting, preventive maintenance. Using all of those technologies and opportunities together, we have been able to reduce our energy consumption by 24%. And 100% of the remaining energy that we will consume is renewable. We've also looked at water consumption and been able to find ways to reduce our water consumption by 75%, in big part because we have implemented a 26,000 gallon rainwater system that reduces our dependency on public water. So all in all, really in a very significant way, reducing our CO2 footprint. We're aiming for LEED gold certification and LEED carbon neutral certification with this new factory operation. If we look at the challenge that we're trying to address as an industry, which is basically a five-fold increase 
in network demand and network capacity between now and 2025, and we've seen for every generation an increasing demand for incremental bandwidth and capacity, we drive about $25 billion worth of energy consumption for our customers. And this is a trend we've been on now for a couple of generations where each subsequent generation increases the capacity and throughput, but also the energy consumption. Thanks to the R&D that we have been working on for the last 10 years, we now finally have found a way to break the energy curve. With our latest generation radio platform, which we have been deploying since 2016, the Ericsson radio system, which is also capable to carry 5G traffic, we have found a way to reduce the energy consumption up to 30%. And on top of that, we have done some breakthrough developments on the software side with sleep mode and other capabilities that further reduce the energy consumption by up to 15%, which all in all allows us for the first time ever to break the energy curve, which then in turn will allow our customers to reduce their CO2 footprint. And many of our customers already today have deployed uh, a lot of these capabilities and are committing to uh, renewable energy in the process. So a lot of activities in our sector, the telecommunications sector. If we look at what we can do together with our customers now addressing other industries, let's take transportation as an example. We did a pilot project here together with the Swedish operator Telia, Schenker, Freight Forwarder, and Ian Ride that produces driverless autonomous trucks. And here the initial results are very encouraging, leveraging our combined technology assets, 5G network capabilities. Uh, Ian Ride has seen an opportunity to reduce their emissions by up to 90% using renewable energies and leveraging these capabilities. An added benefit, of course, is that by using this type of a transport system, they have also been able to deliver 60% in cost efficiencies and cost savings, further increasing and improving the business case for this transition to an autonomous transport system. An additional benefit of using these type of technologies and capabilities is that we should be able to drive towards a zero tolerance on fatalities in traffic as well. Every year, 1.25 million people die in traffic accidents, and I think we should take on that challenge as well. The foundation for sustainable development is really education. And during the COVID crisis, the digital divide has been amplified and exposed a significant challenge that we also need to tackle. For instance, we see that 37% of our rural students do not have broadband connectivity, 21% even in urban areas do not have access to broadband connectivity. 8% of the teachers working from home do not have broadband connectivity. So this is another huge challenge that we need to tackle to create the foundation for more sustainable development. And here is one example. We partnered with our customer Vermont Telephone in Ruthland. And together in the course of 10 days, we were able to expand the coverage of their network to provide the connectivity the city partnered with Google to make devices available, Chromebooks, to the students. So in a matter of 10 days, we were able to equip the students in the city of Rutland with connected devices to be able to participate with high quality education from home. Just one example of many how we, if we come together as an industry, can really make a difference and create a platform for more sustainable development. With that, I think we have a couple of questions. How is connectivity enabling the transition to net zero future in the, in the energy sector? That's a good question, because the energy sector, of course, is one of the largest contributors to carbon footprint. And the energy sector needs to pivot to 85% renewable energy by 2050. And to do that, we need to move to a much more distributed network of smaller generators, solar farms, wind farms, and we also need to be able to, to uh, work in, uh, in two, two ways. So smart grids will be a big part of the solution where you will use sensors and intelligent devices to monitor the network traffic. So as uh, consumers come home at night, the energy patterns in the, net, in the grid shift and intelligent technologies 
with connected devices will allow you to distribute the energy to where you need it. And as a matter of fact, even recycle it so that when you're not using the energy that you may be producing in your private solar panels, you can feed it back into the smart grid. Another aspect of the production is that with a lot of smaller power generators, you also have a highly distributed network that becomes more difficult to manage and to ensure that you don't have any downtime in any of those sites. So here again, connected devices, preventive, proactive, prescriptive maintenance to prevent uh, catastrophic failure of any of those devices also becomes a critical aspect of keeping the efficiencies in that highly distributed uh, energy production grid uh, optimized at all times. So technology will play a major role in enabling the energy sector to pivot to a much more distributed production model. Thank you. Good question. You talk already about the transport and the and the energy sector. Uh, how, what can connectivity do for the industry? You mentioned the 5G. Yes, that's another good question. Manufacturing and the industrial sector is, of course, another big contributor to carbon footprint. And here there is a really good example in, for instance, the turbine manufacturing, which is a high precision milling process where we uh, worked with one of our partners and installed sensors, uh, very precise sensors on the turbine. So we were able to detect micro vibrations long before they created any damage to the turbine and it would have uh, become waste essentially. So that allows us to stop the process, recalibrate and then continue the milling to produce high quality uh, turbines for aircraft engines. And the effects from a CO2 perspective have been phenomenal. So when we looked at the aggregate footprint of this particular uh, production company, the impact was direct impact of increasing the yield and not having to uh, generate waste by machines breaking in the process was about 16,000 metric tons of CO2 in increased production efficiencies. Now, the indirect effect is probably more impressive. By producing better quality turbines, uh, this pr um, company was able to deliver 1 to 2 percent better fuel consumptions for the aircraft engines that these turbines power. And that in turn means 16 million metric tons of CO2 reduction per year which more or less corresponds to a city of 1.2 million inhabitants. So t say the city of Stockholm's CO2 footprint reduced by these type of uh, improvements in the manufacturing process. So truly, truly impressive. Thank you very much, Niklas. What con concluding remarks do you have for us? So in summing up, climate change is real. The effects are visible. And unless we take exponential climate action here and now, some of the effects may be irreversible for generations to come. We absolutely can, if we come together across industries, make a profound impact on the carbon footprint. And there is no reason why we shouldn't be able to deliver a 50% reduction between now and 2030 to get to the 0% net addition by 2050. The technologies are available. We, as a telecommunications industry, and I speak on behalf of Ericsson and our customers with confidence, are fully committed to driving exponential climate action on our behalf. We owe it to our next generation, our children. So I'm counting on all of you to come together as one and take resolute action here and now. Thank you.